Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Very quick video today of how to build a chamfer to fillet transition. So in this case, I have a curvature continuous fillet here, and I've built using some fairly basic surfaces uh, chamfer around here. So you can see what happens is these edges, as they run around this boundary, disappear and run into a tangent, tangent edge around here. So I'll just run through this really quickly. I have created some geometry to begin with, which is an extrude and chop the top off and then deleted some faces on the underside, at least three faces to give us a surface. And then I've added a fillet on this corner here, which is a face fillet. Face fillet, uh, curvature continuous 20 millimeters. And then I've added a variable fillet around the top here. The reason I've added a variable fillet was to allow some control on um, what happens where the chamfer goes in because obviously when you look at it from this angle you're going to lose some of this height and some of the fullness when you add a chamfer in there. So I just um, control that with the variable fillet. And then I've deleted the faces of that fillet. So these two faces where I want the transition to happen. So and then I've created a skip from the center plane which controls the section uh, of the chamfer. So if I go into that sketch, so this line here is tangent to the edge here and this one here is perpendicular to this edge. So that gives me a couple of dimensions. So this here is, if that was 90 degrees, the spline would run tangentially in here. And same with here, if this was 90 degrees, there'd be a tangent in here. So we've got, we've got 20 degrees uh, deviation between this uh, spline and this edge here. So the spline is a star spline, Bezier curve, degree three, so it's got four CVs, and the control polygon segments have equal length relationships. Then I've created at the end of this fillet here, created another plane through and added a section, as you can see. And this is set up in the same way as the first sketch, except We've only got 10 degrees of deviation from being tangent, so as you can see, 100 degrees on both sides. And then I've created a boundary surface, and the boundary surface runs through those three sections, one, two, and the edge, and then I've used the selection manager to pick these two sets of edges here. Uh, they don't, there's no um, boundary constraints on those, just positional. Uh, in this direction here, we've got normal profile on this end, and tangent to edge here, and I've left the tangent influence on zero because if I, if I crank it up, it has minimal effect on the form except it introduces a few wrinkles, so no point having that on. Okay, then I've knitted everything together and mirrored the body across and knitted the body together with merge entities on to merge these faces. So there we go, so if we check this edge here with deviation analysis, you can see what happens is it starts off at um, 20 degrees midway around, close to where our section is through here, it uh, drops to 10 degrees, and then by the time it gets around to this uh, fillet here, it's zero degrees, which is pretty much what we want. As you can see, these the arrows, uh, the convergence or the divergence reduces as we come around here towards the uh, end of the crease. And if I have a look at that with the zebra stripes on, Turn my edges off, you can see what's happening as well. Uh, curvature continuous, as you can see by no kink here, where the zebra crosses into the fillet, and then um, there's a, a kink forming, and then the, the stripes don't line up at all, which means that's a, just a positional uh, continuity through the middle there. So yeah, fairly simple technique, um, using some basic surfacing to get fill it to chamfer transition and also some you know some tweakability if you want it uh, if you want to increase the size of the crease on one side you can easily do that and rebuild so now it's got much more of a flat on this side and you can tweak things with the variable fillet as well and the reason I've kept these two dimensions the same is so I don't run into having a, a wobble in the middle here. Um, 
yeah, so a little basic uh, technique from me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.